Number three, remember the giant situations you've already overcome. Remember the giant situations you've already overcome. Now, you don't, you're not going to read this one, but I hope you go back and read it. If you look back in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and re- you can read this whole uh, section to get this account. But we're going to focus on two, uh, three verses, 34 through 37. But let me give you a little backstory. War has broken out between Israel and the Philistine army. Just like there's war right now overseas. There's war everywhere. But war is broken out between the people of God and the Philistine army. And the Philistines has this one soldier, and he's huge. I mean, he's so big and strong. He's impressive. He's so impressive that the Bible breaks down his stats. It tells you how tall he is. It tells you how much his sword weighed, how much his, his chest plate weighed. That, I think his chest plate weighed about 125 pounds. Now, imagine putting 125 pounds worth of armor on you and still having to fight. And so this soldier, this giant, would step out every day and he would talk bad to God's people. And he would say, send out somebody to come and fight me. And if I kill him, y'all will be our servants. And if he kills me, we'll be your servants. And everybody was scared of him. Everybody, even the king, everybody's scared of him. Now, meanwhile, back at home, there's a little shepherd boy. And he's tending the flock. And his dad calls him in the house. And he says, son, that that boy's name was David. He says, son, um, I need you to take this food to your brothers out on the battlefield. And just check on them and see if they're doing okay. So he goes out, and when he gets there, this giant, this mountain of a man steps out, and he makes his daily proclamation. He starts talking bad about God and talking bad about God's people. And David says, whoa, ain't nobody going to step to this dude. His brothers got mad. His brother, man, what are you doing here? You always trying to be in the business. David's like, what did I do? I'm telling you, the Bible's so cool because that's exactly how we talk to each other's brothers and say, man, what do I do now? Good grace, I just came to bring y'all something to eat. Then David hears what the king promises for anyone that could defeat this guy. Riches, one of his daughters. All the other men are scared, and David goes, I'll fight him. The king pulls him to the side and says, listen, man, I, I admire your courage, but... That guy's been killing men since he was your age. I couldn't send you out there. And he says, no, no, see, you ain't sending me out there. You sending my God out there. So then let's fast forward to verse 34 through 37. And this is what David, how David responds. It says, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. You see, he remembered the giant situations of the past and how God had prevailed then, He's expecting God to prevail now. See, this is a trait right here that too many of us are missing. When things don't look so good now, we forget about how God brought us through the last thing that didn't look so good. I mean, think about it. There was a time you were like, oh, I'm dreading tomorrow. That was 20 years ago. God brought you through 20 years past that day that you thought you could never deal with. That is crazy to think about. That we forget that he has brought us through all of that stuff. And the enemy wants you to forget that. Because when you start focusing on, and this is a cliche, and y'all know how I feel about cliches, but this one I kind of like a little bit. Instead of telling your problem, how, oh, instead of telling God how big your problem is, tell your problem how big your God is. See, I don't know why I don't like Christian cliches, but that one kind of settles a little bit. I'm focusing on the wrong thing. My perspective needs to be on, okay, yeah, I know I got to deal with this giant here, but God will make a way. The ability to remember what God has done and who God is in our lives keeps us from losing heart. It keeps us from giving in. It keeps us from quitting. 
It's something we must do if we desire to keep pressing forward. Because if we focus on the despair, it will cripple us. It will keep us right where we are. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Write that one down. This is the New Living Translation. It says, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. The reward is on the other side of the difficulty. We want God to snuff out the difficulty, but God says, no, 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 no. You got to go through that to get to the reward. If you want muscles like the ones I've got, you're going to have to work out. Well, maybe not the ones I've got, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. If you want it, you're going to have to work through difficulty to get to it. There's a song by Ty Tribbett that's titled, If He Did It Before. Y'all heard that song? I was listening to it this morning. He says, if he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. We've got to trust the God that has a proven record. We've got to remember where he's brought us from. Now, I'm going to text this to y'all later because when I typed it, it blessed me so much, and I don't want y'all to slow down to write it. I wrote this in my notes. Although the name of our giants may change, our God does not. Our confidence should not and our faith must not. The giant name will change. A loss of a job, that's a giant situation. Loss of a loved one, giant situation. Trouble in my marriage, giant situation. The name changes, but God doesn't. The God that gave you power to get another job is the same God that gave you power to rekindle your marriage. The same God that, that, that made sure that you've been blessed for None of y'all are 75 yet. 72 and a half years. It's the same God that will help you pay your rent. You're panicking over rent. You were panicking over rent 22 years ago. Do you remember that? Now you got a mortgage. You, you were panicking over rent. Now you got a mortgage. But I forgot that God elevated me to a mortgage. And he saw me through for 22 years. The giant may change, but your God does not. Did you know that you could actually support the YouTube channel and podcast? That's right. If you have a desire to be a blessing to the show, there's many different ways you can do it. We have Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, and you can use the website to make a donation. Any donation will help and every donation will be used to pour into the lives of others. So if you want to click on the description of this video, you can find all of the information you need to make a donation. God bless you. And and thank you for your support.